The first practical seaplanes were first flown before the First World War. During that war, seaplane naval air missions consisted of maritime patrol, anti-submarine warfare, mine laying and search and rescue. After the war, commercial versions of the same seaplanes set the range and endurance records of the time. By the late 1920s, the largest and fastest aircraft in the world were seaplanes. After the outbreak of World War II, the military and commercial significance of seaplanes gradually diminished, partly because of the increased range of land-based planes and partly because of the construction of many more land bases and wide-scale introduction of aircraft carriers. However, seaplanes still played a significant role during the war, in particular maritime patrol and anti-submarine warfare, with some of the most notable including the US Catalina, British Sunderland and the Japanese Kawanishi H8K. Following World War II, development of seaplanes continued, in particular for transport and commercial travel, but only on a small scale. Nowadays, seaplanes maintain a few niche users, such as for aerial firefighting, maritime search and rescue, air transport around archipelagos, and access to underdeveloped or roadless areas, some of which have numerous lakes. G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, China's AG600 Kunlong. What should we expect? What can it do? The AG600 Kunlong is a large amphibious aircraft designed by AVIC, the Aviation Industry Corporation of China, and assembled by Kaga. Powered by four YJ6C turboprops, the Kunlong is named after a mythical Chinese sea creature known as a Kun, which could change or morph into a flying creature, in this case, a dragon. It is a true amphibian, being able to take off and land on both water and land. The prototype was rolled out in July 2016, with its first flight in December 2017, and its first water takeoff and landing in October 2018. A modified prototype was rolled out in early 2022, which has since conducted test flights in extreme cold environment and at night. The firefighting variant is planned to receive certification in 2024, with deliveries starting in 2025. So far, it has gained a number of orders, all from the Chinese government, including the China Coast Guard. But the AG600 is not China's first foray into building a seaplane. The Harbin SH-5 was developed in the 1970s and ended service in 1986. Primarily designed for anti-submarine warfare, only seven were built, with one developed for firefighting. Unlike the SH-5, the initial variant of the AG-600 is a firefighter, able to carry 12 tonnes of water and retardant. An AG-600M, being the dedicated firefighting model, successfully completed scooping and dropping water tests in September 2022. The next to be developed after the firefighting variant is the search and rescue variant, with a prototype already having flown. The likely Chinese operator of this variant is the China Coast Guard. According to Chinese television, this variant would have a search and rescue radius of 1,650 kilometres or around 1,000 miles, sufficient for a round trip from Sanya and Hainan Island to the southern regions of the South China Sea and out past the Philippines and Taiwan into the Philippine Sea. The new prototype that was rolled out in 2022 will also form the basis of the production search and rescue variant. This prototype has some minor changes, including the nose is reshaped and angled down more sharply, and the forward access door on the port side is moved forward closer to the cockpit. But China isn't the only country to operate large seaplanes. A country with a long history of seaplanes is Japan, which made significant use of them during World War II. The Japanese Maritime Self-Defence Force currently has in service the Shinmeiwa US-2, which is used for search and rescue missions and has enhanced short takeoff and landing or stall performance. Shinmeiwa has designed a firefighting variant which replaces one fuel tank with a 15-tonne water tank, reducing its maximum range to 2,300 kilometres compared to the search and rescue variant 4,700 kilometres. 
The Japanese Maritime Self-Defence Force intends to purchase up to 14 US-2s for its search and rescue needs. For search and rescue operations, the US-2 has a large opening on the port side just behind the retracted main undercarriage. As a side note, Shin Meiwa have said in response to questioning that it is difficult to fit weapons on the outside of the US-2. Given Shin Meiwa's comments on placing weapons externally on the US-2, might this also be an issue for the AG-600? If so, perhaps weapons could be carried internally rather than on pylons under the wings in a broadly similar manner to the Royal Air Force Sunderlands of World War II and run out on tracks under the wings. Another country that operates seaplanes in non-offensive military roles is Russia with the Beriev B-200. It differs from other seaplanes in that it uses turbofans rather than turboprops. They are mainly used by the Ministry of Emergency Situations for firefighting and transport, but there are also a few in the Ministry of Defence for search and rescue missions. Note, I won't be including the larger Beriev A40 or 42 Albatross as there are only two prototypes and no official orders as yet. Perhaps the most well-known firefighting seaplane is the de Havilland Canada 515, previously known as the Canadair CL415. It is significantly smaller than the other firefighters mentioned here due to only having two engines, but it is the most numerous in terms of production aircraft and most widely used seaplane firefighter in the world. In terms of specifications, the AG600 is the largest and heaviest of the seaplanes currently flying, with a maximum takeoff weight of 53,500 kilograms or around 118,000 pounds for a land takeoff. Unsurprisingly, the BE200 has the highest cruise speed due to its turbofans. The US2 has the longest range in search and rescue mode but this reduces drastically when in firefighter mode. Note I've added the P3C Orion here as a generic turboprop anti-submarine warfare aircraft for comparison. In summary, the AG600 Kunlong should prove to be an effective firefighter and maritime search and rescue aircraft, given range payload and endurance performance, albeit with a limited short takeoff performance. But what about a more specific military role, noting no official orders yet from the PLA Navy? As for an anti-submarine warfare variant, the question must be, why? What would this offer over and above the Y8 and Y9 anti-submarine platforms currently in service? And noting the potential challenges of mounting weapons externally. More likely is a military transport aircraft variant, in particular for resupply operations in the South China Sea and or special forces insertion extraction missions. And perhaps as a maritime patrol and surveillance aircraft, but with no external weapons. Regardless, a dedicated military variant is some time off, if at all. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers. So please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, far later, Sarah.